This is part two of a three-part video on how to make a paper towel holder using the Project Designer version 3. Okay, picking up where we left off from the previous video. The first thing we'll do here is to create a cut path around the outside of our paper towel holder end. And we'll do that by selecting the cutout vector that we created earlier in the first video and what we would like to do is to move this line over a half an inch so when the cut path is assigned it will trim off that rounded profile on the top of the board. We allowed that to be cut off by making the overall height eight and a half rather than just eight. So this will shorten it up to eight inches and uh, to do that we'll select the cut path here on the toolbar. You can also select it from the tools menu. The cutout control dialog box comes up and we'll leave the minimum number of tabs set to five and the uh, tab spacing to three. The tab height to a quarter of an inch. We'll set the maximum pass depth to 0.25. Don't want to break any bits we'll flip that cut to the outside so the waist is on the outside of the line rather than on the inside and then select accept now what we'd like to do zoom in here just a little is to move this line over a half an inch so when the cut path tool is assigned to this perimeter it will cut off this outside profile the easiest way to do that is to turn the grid on, selecting layout and snap, set the snap interval to 0.5, snap objects to the grid and view the grid. Okay. Now you can see that there is a grid line that lines up perfectly with the right edge of our rounded off profile. So all we need to do is to click and hold on this vertex that's here and drag it over until it snaps to the grid line. And then we'll do the same on the bottom. And now we've moved the cutout when we over to the right, half an inch. Okay, the next thing we need, let's turn this grid off, lay out and snap, uncheck the, uh, the two check boxes and select OK. The next thing we'll do is to cut the hole for the paper towel holder mount or roll uh, for the dowel that goes all the way through. We'll select the circle tool and draw a circle of about where we want it and then we'll use the size dialog boxes here on the toolbar make sure this uh, lock constraint is set on so it sets both sides at the same time and we'll make that 1.3 and press enter now I made mine 1.3 to accommodate a one and a quarter inch dowel if you're using a dowel of a different size then just make the, the hole smaller or larger appropriately Okay, let's. Uh, we want to move that uh, circle we're going to make into a hole here in just a minute to the final place that it needs to be. And I'll use this very center yellow uh, dot here and to attach it to the bottom edge of the board and also to the left edge of the board. Now we know the paper towel holder end is one inch from the bottom, and now this is one and a half inches from the, the left end. So we'll right click on that yellow center, select attach, move to the bottom of the board and click, type in 3.625 and press enter. And we'll use the center 
of the circle again to attach right click and attach and we'll attach it to the left edge of the board at 4.5 I've made several test cuts and one final uh, project here and I have determined that these measurements are in fact exactly where we want them and it should accommodate even a large paper towel roll on the inside okay let's make that flat spot down here on the profile around the around the edge to um, remove that unsightly gap that would be caused when we mount the apron to the front to do that we'll use the rectangle tool draw the rectangle approximately where we need it approximate size and then we'll use the dialog boxes here again on the toolbar to set the length of that box to two inches type of two and press enter and we'll set the width to 0.5 press enter I made it two inches because that's the height of our apron that's going to be mounted on the front and I set the width equal to the width of the round over or the profile going around the outside edge now we need to align the bottom edge of this box to the bottom edge of our paper towel holder edge here and we we know that that paper towel holder edge is one inch so I'll set the bottom of the, the box to one inch also by attaching it clicking on this uh, green measurement here typing a one and press enter again we'll use the measurement that's being uh, shown here on the screen from the yellow center on the left hand edge of the box to the left edge of the board I'll just click on that and type in 1.5 and press enter that should effectively line up the box with the top left corner here of our paper towel holder end next we want to make this a carve region so I'll use my carve region tool once I clicked on it it made the carve region but it made it a quarter of an inch deep we want that depth to be zero so type a zero in the depth box and press enter and what that does it raises the carve region up to the height of the board or the, the same height as the uh, surface of the board now while we're there let's just change the bit quality or the bit optimization to best and uncheck the floor feather one thing we did forget to do we created the hole and sized it and put it in position here uh, for the paper towel dowel but we didn't create a cut path for it so we'll select it and using the cut path tool here on the toolbar brings up the cutout control dialog box and I'm going to hide the cut or hide the cutout or the center uh, I think a minimum number of tabs for five for a small hole like this is probably a little bit too many so let's just cut that down to four leave the three tabs for a foot and the tab height to one quarter inch we'll set the maximum pass depth to 0.25 want to break any bits and select accept okay now we need to flip the board over and create the rabbit on the back so I'll flip it over zoom in just a little here I'm going to use the rectangle tool and draw it approximately where we want it here at the bottom edge of the board we want to create a rabbit so the back board when we assemble it will mount flush to the back edge of the paper towel holder end so we'll set the size of that box to eight inches wide here in the dialog boxes on the toolbar so type in eight press enter and we'll set the width to the thickness of our board or the thickness of our back which is 0.75 press enter 
And again, we need to attach the bottom edge of this line to the same distance from the edge of the board as the bottom edge of the paper towel holder. So we'll click on this measurement tool here, which is going to use the center of the box. Click on it and type a 1 and press enter. That'll move the box to 1 inch from the edge. We'll right click on the yellow box over here on the left end of the rectangle we drew and select attach. And we'll attach it to the left edge of the board. Click on it, type in 1.5 and press enter. So now that perfectly aligns that box with the top or the back corner of our uh, paper towel holder and on the inside. So what we need to do now is make uh, a couple or three successive uh, boxes to the inside offset by uh, 0.1 inch. So I'll use the path offset here on my toolbar. It's already going to uh, cut to the inside so we don't need to change it. The, we'll leave all of the boxes fillet style for corner and the distance to 0.1 and click on OK. Now I used point 0.1 here because the width of the bit we're going to use is point 0.125 and that should give us a little bit of overcut to eliminate any waste and clean up any uh, any need for sanding or cleaning up with the chisel. So we'll do that again with that offset box selected. We'll select path offset again typing in point 0.1 for the distance select OK. And one more time, path offset, point 0.1, and OK. Now if I did that one more time, zoom in here a little bit, if I did a path offset there one more time, I think these top and bottom lines would overlap each other and that wouldn't work out very well. So what I'm going to do is just draw a line straight down the middle instead of using the rectangle. So unselect that, select the line segment tool here on my toolbar, zoom in kind of close, and about half the distance between the top and the bottom lines of the last rectangle we just drew or offset, click the left mouse button and release. And we're going to move over to the right side of the board, but you can see that as I move it's easy to get the line up or down so it's not straight. So I'm going to hold the control key down here as I move across and now you can see it it effectively locks the constraint in so you can't be moved up or down just left or right. So I'm going to zoom out here and then zoom back in over here on the right hand edge of the board. Get close to the box we just drew previously. The left the right edge of the box and then just click the left mouse button. The idea was to try to get this line centered between these two. And it looks like I did a pretty good job there. But uh, if yours didn't, you can click and hold the mouse button down while you're pointing to the line and drag it to a new location. Now it does not have to be perfect. We're talking about a few thousandths of an inch here. So and the thickness of the bit and the overcut will more than compensate for any anything that you get it off center. So as long as within reason. So close is good enough here. Zoom back out. Now I'm going to drag select or marquee select all of the lines and boxes we just drew and I'm going to assign a bit and a bit depth by selecting select bit here on my toolbar. You can also select it from the tools menu brings up the select bit dialog box and I'm going to scroll down until I get to the 1 8 inch straight and select it. We'll set the depth to 0.375 which is half of the thickness of our uh, the back the material. We'll set the max pass depth to 0.25. That may not be totally necessary since we're probably just going to be shaving off edges but I'd rather be safe than sorry. It takes an extra uh, few minutes to make the pocket cut and um, making sure that we don't break any bits. 
and select OK. Now I'll click off of that so you can see the pocket that it made there. And the reason I didn't use the Carve Region tool is because, first of all, it takes a long time, and second of all, this uh, inside line would not be straight. It would have a slight taper of uh, 5 degrees, I think, or 7 degrees that the uh, uh, carving bit has, and that wouldn't work out too well. It would leave a gap. So uh, using the pocket cut here uh, makes a nice straight side, straight walled rabbit. Now there is one more thing we need to do before it's complete, and that is the very first box that we drew, or the rectangle there, when we assign that bit, it's going to cut right dead center on the line, which means half of the width of the bit will be above the line, and the other half will be below. And the half that's above the line will make the, the box a little bit too wide, a little more than three quarters of an inch. Now if you use the cut path tool, of course we can't use that here, we don't want to cut all the way through, but this is uh, analogous to the cut path tool where the cut path tool uh, compensates for the width of the bit. In this case here, it does not. So we have to compensate ourselves manually. And that's called the inset feature. Uh, it's here on the toolbar. You could also go back into the uh, select bit dialog box, and it's there also. In this inset uh, dialog box here on the toolbar, I'm going to type in 1 16th of an inch by typing 1 slash 1 6. If you prefer, you can type 0 0.063 its decimal equivalent or close and press enter. Now what that does is insets the cut by a sixteenth of an inch which is the radius of our bit. So the outside of the bit now will cut inside the line. And we'll go back to the very front that completes the back for this um, right paper towel holder end. Uh, we'll flip it back to the front. And what we're going to do is select everything. Now you can drag select, but remember this weave pattern is quite large. Or you can also uh, click on the very first item here in the cut, uh, cut list and hold the shift key down and click on the last. That will select everything. But I like to make sure by selecting edit and then clicking on select all or you could probably just press control A from the keyboard and that will select everything on this side of the board. Make sure we are indeed on this side of the board and it, it's selected. So I'll select edit and select all. Now I'm going to right click here in the middle and select mirror horizontally. Now it does a really good job mirroring horizontally except some of the final settings we need to do by hand. Uh, for instance, clipping the carving on the weave pattern, uh, assigning uh, the uh, cut path to the actual uh, vector that's going around, and, and uh, also uh, it didn't do any grouping. So when we uh, right click on this uh, and group it, or uh, sorry, I'm sorry, uh, uh, clip it inclusive, it uh, will do the same thing as it did on the first one and we'll have to group it to change it. Before we actually get started on that, let's take a look at what it named everything over here when we uh, did a mirror. In the cut list here, it named everything exactly the, s the same. It, so um, it may be confusing later on should you decide to come back and do some editing or whatever. So I think the easiest thing to do, and I've always gotten a habit of doing, is renaming the stuff over here so I can select it here in the cut list easily by name and there's no guessing. So starting at the very first one that it pasted back in whenever we did the mirror, it's called the cutout. You can see it's on the right hand edge of the board. So I'm going to right click on, on that and rename it. And all I'm going to do is move over to the beginning of the Word and type in capital L and press the space bar and then enter. That just lets me know that it's the left paper towel holder end. Do the same thing with the perimeter. Right click and rename. Type an L in the space. The recess. 
Again, I'm verifying that each of these selected over here on the on the correct side of the board before I rename it. Right click, rename, L space, weave pattern, the circle, which was our uh, cutout for the dowel, rename it. and the rectangle that we use to compensate for the apron on the front. So it mirrored all those things over there. We just got to touch them up a bit. So selecting the weave pattern here in the carving list, I'm going to uh, right click on that and select clip carving inclusive. There again, it clipped it to the carve region, but it clipped it to the wrong carve region. So we need to do some grouping. So with that weave pattern still selected here in the cut list, I'm going to select the object right above it, which is the left recess, and just click on the group button. And that cleaned it up quite nicely. Next thing we'll do is to select the cutout and actually assign the cut path tool to it. Cut path here on the toolbar. It copied pretty much all of the settings except that it didn't flip the cut to the outside which is what we want. So I'll flip it now. Leave the maximum pass depth to 0.25 and accept. Now we'll select the circle, the left circle over here, and assign the cut path to that also. Cut path here on the toolbar. And again, it copied the, the uh, settings over pretty good. It even kept the uh, four tabs per uh, minimum. So everything else looks pretty good, including the max pass depth. So we'll hide the cutout and then accept. Okay, I think that pretty much um, completes this side of the paper towel holder ends. We made the uh, right end, the right side of the board here, the left end, um, very quickly just by using the mirroring function. Now we'll flip back to the back side. We'll drag select everything here that rabbit, all the lines and the uh, rectangles and the offsets that we made there. I'm going to right click on the center of it there and select mirror horizontally. And that will mirror our rabbit to the other side of the board. Okay, let's slip, slip back to the um, front of the board. Double check everything and at this point you should save it. Don't forget to save your work. Uh, I'd hate to have to go back through and recreate the whole thing over again. Everything looks really well uh, proportioned and really well done here so we can save it. I already have it saved so I'm not going to do it again. This concludes the first video uh, completion or the second video actually and in the next video we're going to do the apron. We'll create the apron, we'll create the shape, the shape here on the bottom, we'll create the profile around the edge and put the weave pattern in, similar to what we did on the end uh, of the paper towel holder. So this concludes this video, we'll see you again on the next video.